everybody and welcome to the seventh instalment of this year's Mystery Blanket Club. I can hardly believe that we are only three more instalments after this away from the end of the project. The time has just absolutely flown by. I don't know what it's been like for you, but for me, this year has gone so fast and I find myself now, um, my head in next year's blanket, designing that, getting everything ready for our launch next month. Um, the time has really flown by. So I hope you are continuing to enjoy your squares and that you'll enjoy the six squares that I've got for you this month. Now, before I talk to you about the squares and just give you a little bit of information about them to prepare you for what's ahead this month, uh, I'm just going to remind you that um, once you've listened to this and watched this, it's really important to read the written blog. If you can spare a further 10, 15 minutes, there's lots of extra information in the written part of this blog. Um, there are a couple of lovely member stories. There's lots of hints and tips about the squares. Um, and also there's a little bit of information about next year's mystery blanket and the baby blanket, which I'm in the last month of signing you up for. You've got one more month to sign up for that baby blanket if you want to take part in another mystery adventure this year. So on Friday, the 25th of August, we will be launching the 2024 Mystery Blanket Club. This is the 17th club in the Mystery Blanket collection. Uh, and I know that a few of you out there have knitted every single blanket, which I think is absolutely incredible. In fact, if you've done that, it would be good to know who you are. Um, I have a, a, a recollection of of who those people are, but I, I don't want to forget anybody. So um, if you have knitted all, all the blankets to date, I would love to know. Um, and maybe I'll do a little article in a, in a future blog about that. Um, but yes, we're on number 17. So it's a mystery, so I'm not going to tell you too much about it. In fact, there will be a email sent to you, a newsletter, uh, when we launch, which will tell you uh, a little bit about the colour palette, about the yarns. I'm hugely excited about it. I'm working with James Laxton again on a wonderful colour palette um, using the same 100% wool that we've used for this year's blanket. Plus, there's um, some lovely Rowan yarns in there. Of course, loads and loads of beads, lots of sparkle next year. Um, but make that a date in your diary, Friday the 25th of August. Uh, and we'll be launching our club then with a special early bird offer for the first month. Everybody that signs up within the first month before the end of September uh, will be entitled to lots of benefits with our early bird offer, including a discount um, and including a really exciting free pattern as well, plus some other bits and pieces. And remember that you can spread your payments across the instalment plan. So if you want to get that place booked, we have limited places in the 16 years that we've sold the blanket. We've sold out every year. Uh, ahead of our closing date, which is the end of December. So if you want to grab yourself a place, um, you don't need to pay the full amount straight away. You can pay uh, between two and four payments in our instalment plan. Just pay, if you like, a deposit to secure your place. So uh, that's a date to put in your diary. And um, hopefully you'll decide to join me again next year. Just a reminder too that our Mystery Baby Blanket Club begins on the 1st of October and we still have places on that. Uh, memberships are available. Your sign-up deadline is the end of August. So you have got uh, approximately just over four weeks to get yourself signed up. Um, brand new project, really, really excited about the design. I can't wait to share the first instalment with you. I'm so excited about it. And here, uh, this is, of course, not this year's blanket because it's a mystery. So this is the Love You to the Moon about, just to remind you what was, what was in the previous mystery baby blanket, which was in 2020. So we're three years on from that. So the colour palette for the new blanket is um, completely different to this, different theme, but this is the kind of thing you're going to get, a mixture of cables, lace patterns, some intarsia, some ferrule, some lovely textured stitches in a really lovely, soft, uh, quite nostalgic, little bit vintage 
colour palette. Um, that's all I'm going to say. But if you want to join that, there is still time. 35 squares, slightly smaller than the blanket squares, um, but a 35 square project split over seven months. It will be a huge amount of fun. Uh, do come and join me if you fancy coming on that adventure with me. We start October the 1st. Okay then, what have I got in store for you this month? Well, it's a little bit of revision going on. You will recognise some of the squares from previous mail outs or you'll recognise them and think that looks a bit different because it's a variation of a previous square that you've already knitted. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through those now. This is your brochure. Look at that on the front. You've got a new square in the middle, toadstools. Okay, so there's a new one there and you can just see on here, here is Thicket but recoloured. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but on the front cover there, a preview of your squares. So if we look at the piecing diagram, look how full up it is now. There's just a few spaces after this month uh, that need to be filled in. So we're really, really accelerating now towards the end of this project. You can see how this design is really starting to come together. Okay, your first square then is Wolfsbane square four, for which there are two options. Now, this square is identical to square 46, which is on the opposite side on the piecing diagram. And I would suggest that you choose the same option that you knitted for square 46 to keep the design balanced. Ultimately, it's up to you, but if I were you, I would choose that same option. I think it's going to work well if you do that. The second square this month is square 21, autumn cable. Now the autumn cable, it's autumn cable two. Okay, autumn cable was in, oh, I think the, possibly the March mail out, way, way back. It was an orange cable with, I think it had lime green beads in it. So this is a variation on Autumn Cable. It's Autumn Cable 2. So major differences here are you are using Elfin in place of Pumpkin. The beads have changed to Velvet. And the, the cables cross in the opposite direction. So they are crossing towards the right. They're a cable seven back, I had to check the pattern then, it's a seven, cable seven back, so they twist to the right. In autumn cable, the first autumn cable, the cables twisted to the left because the stitches were held to the front, cable seven front. This is cable seven back. So those are the two major differences, uh, three major differences, beads, colour of yarn, the way the cables twist, everything else though is the same. Next up is square 32 butterflies and this is identical to square 18 from the previous mail out. Uh, there are two options for this square and I would suggest that you knit the same option that you chose for square 18, again to keep the whole design balanced. Uh, so look back at what you knitted for square 18 and repeat that same option. Square 33 is your fourth square to knit this month. And this is Thicket 2. So it's a variation of square number 17, which was uh, originally Thicket, knitted in shadow. Uh, this time the shadow has been replaced by Chestnut. Just watch out because the photograph I'm looking at uh, in the mail out looks a little bit like pumpkin, but it's not pumpkin, it's Chestnut you're using for this. as instructed on page 18 underneath the square where it says yarns it's chestnut that is correct your beads are gold and bronze this time giving a sort of a different feeler a different look to this square the sort of dark more sinister look of the square with the greys and the, those velvet beads um, has now changed to something much more autumnal with this lovely rich chestnut colour uh, everything else in that square is the same so it's just a bead colour change and a yarn colour change for that square. So that's 33 Thicket 2. 
So for square 41, you have two options. And for option one, you have a new square to knit. It's called toad stalls. So it's kind of a sister square to square nine, which was toad stall. So this time you've got a group of toad stalls. Now, first of all, I would suggest that you knit the same option that you chose for square nine. So you've got toad stalls in opposite corners. If you didn't knit option one for square nine, um, then I would suggest that you go for option two, which was the all over textured beaded pattern uh, using acorn. So uh, just have a look what you knitted for square nine. And as I said, I would knit the same option. Again, it's totally up to you. You might prefer a random look to your blanket, but I miss symmetry. I love symmetry. I would have to have my toadstools opposite each other, but I'll leave that up to you uh, to decide what you want to knit. For option one then, there are, um, it's an intarsia, intarsia motif, which means you're gonna be using separate balls of yarn for each area of color. And there are two types of um, bead techniques used for this. There are beads that are hooked in and there are beads that are slip stitched. So just looking at the chart, uh, the bronze and velvet beads are slip stitched and the black beads are hooked in. Okay, uh, and then there is some chain stitch embroidery around some of those beads on the toadstools and some embroidery along the lower edges of the toadstools as well, uh, which is not shown on the chart. Okay, the, those lower um, edge outlines. It's really important to read the pattern notes and tips for every square you knit, but if you read the pattern notes and tips on page 20, uh, it does talk about that. It sort of preps you for the square and lets you know what's going on in that square. So uh, quite a lot going on in that square, but it was a really lovely one to knit. I really enjoyed that one. And uh, I hope if you decide to opt for the option one for this square that you enjoy it too. So finally for this month, we have square 42, which is called the Pixies and Nixies are back because yes, they are. They, they turned up, didn't they? Early on in the project, we had them in uh, squares, let me just check, eight and 36, we had Pixies and Nixies. Well, this time we've got a repeat of this square, but it's a little bit different because the square has been mirror imaged and rotated over, flipped over. Uh, so it's similar to eight and 36, but with a change. The ferrule section for option one, there are two options. The ferrule section for option one is at the top, towards the top of the square, instead of at the bottom. And on the option two, that lovely decorative beaded loop stitch, again, is towards the top rather than the bottom of the square. So it's been flipped. Okay. Uh, and for that, I would knit the same options as you chose for eight and 36. And if you did different options for eight and 36, then definitely do the same option uh, that you knitted for square eight. Okay, just to keep that balance going. Okay. So those are your six squares. Lots and lots and lots to get yourself stuck into this month. Lots to keep you busy. Um, most of them are revisions or variations of before. So there are no new tech vids this month. You can go back and use the previous uh, tech vids if you need any assistance. Of course, you can always email me if you've got a query. And remember to use those social media platforms, the Ravelry group, the Facebook group, which are very, very helpful. Um, normally when I, when I pop in there to have a look, everybody's being extremely helpful, offering advice, sharing tips, questions are asked, questions are answered in there. Uh, so do use that as well if you need some extra guidance or just a little bit of encouragement with your squares to keep you going um, throughout August. So just before I go, just a few things I wanted to talk to you about to get you excited this autumn. What is new from the Debbie Abraham studio this autumn? Well, in September, we are having a knitted cowl kit promotion. So there is going to be uh, a few cowl designs that we're going to put on special offer, um, including a new design called Fraggle Rock, which those of you that came to Hell Bay, uh, oh crikey, a couple of years ago now, um, the project was a uh, Japanese short row shaped cow, very interesting to knit. Um, and I'm launching that as a kit this autumn together with the mystery, festive mystery box cow, which was the snowflake 
cow uh, that was the kit in the box uh, that will be released also in September so watch out for that if you fancy a nice wintry project to knit up something to keep your neck warm during the the, the months ahead when it turns cooler uh, we also are launching our very, very popular festive mystery boxes. These will be launched towards the end of October, beginning of November, giving you a chance to order them as a Christmas gift, maybe for yourself or for somebody else. We will have 150 of these boxes and that is it. We sold out previous two years. We've sold out very, very quickly. So put that in your diary uh, as a note to remember. Um, of course, we'll send you an email to let you know that they're launched. Um, we are currently putting together all the bits and pieces for it and are hugely excited. I think it's going to be um, a really, really good one this year. Uh, so can't wait to uh, launch that end of October, beginning of November. And the final thing is that there will be a new addition to the shop around that time. Um, I'm not gonna tell you too much about it. Again, bit of a mystery. You know me and my mysteries, which I love. Uh, bit of a mystery, but it's not a knitting kit. It's nothing to knit, but there's a new, very exciting addition to the shop. I'm so excited about it, but I'm not going to tell you any more until we launch it later on this year. So lots to look forward to this coming autumn. OK, but before that, you've now got your August squares to knit. There's a lot to knit. It's quite a, a big file this month because there's lots of options, four options on your squares. So there's lots and lots for you to knit up, lots to get stuck into and lots to keep you busy. So I'm going to go now. I'm going to leave you to browse your patterns, get your needles and your yarn ready and start knitting. So have a lovely August wherever you are, whether you're holidaying or you're staying at home. Um, have a great summer and I will see you back here at the beginning of September for instalment number eight. So until then, take care everybody and have a great August. See you next month. Bye bye.